I studied abroad myself 15 to 18 years ago. In last 11 years, I have guided more than 800 clients and overall more than 10,000 people via my content. But this year I am realizing that study abroad is not what it used to be and therefore I need to change my advice as well. So today I am going to tell you where I was wrong and what's my latest stance on study abroad. Keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. By the way, we have crossed 120,000 followers on LinkedIn. I really enjoy posting and engaging with students and professionals there. So do connect with me there if you like more frequent advice from me. Alright, so today we are talking about why I think my old study abroad advice does not apply in current scenario and how I would change it. So here are the five things I have said in the past and I think I was wrong. Number one is I've said study abroad is a no brainer. The thing is India provided really lackluster career options a decade ago. So anyone who was really ambitious wanted to move out. However, with entrepreneurship booming and economy performing solidly, your options to start up or work in high salary jobs have widened in India. Plus, job prospects and ease of getting the work visa is diminishing in the US. When you combine these two factors, it means that the decision to study abroad is no longer a no-brainer. Now, study abroad is lucrative only if you are a middle class with limited prospects in India and you can see clear upside by moving abroad which means you think you can get high paying jobs after your education. Second thing is I've always said do only a targeted job search and this does not work in current situation. In 2023 and 2024, what we are observing is that the job market has become impossibly competitive. There is just very high quality talent available in the market because of layoffs. Earlier, it made sense to being more selective and apply to jobs that you really wanted and keep waiting for the right one. However, you cannot afford to be picky in this crazy job market. Companies are posting jobs but not hiring for months. They are being very cautious and selective. So you need to try everything and apply to broader set of jobs to really have a shot here. What I mean is, let's say you are targeting data science roles but you are not getting it. I would say try for adjacent roles as well such as data engineering, data analysts, maybe even software engineering if that's relevant with your skill set and previous experience. Similarly, you might not be getting product roles so maybe just go with software engineering if you are from tech background or business analyst or project manager if you are from non-tech background. The point is keep trying wider things, apply to even those places where you normally would not have applied. This is different from my usual advice where I ask you to be extremely focused, picky and selective in the places you apply to. Third thing I've said is it is okay to study abroad as a fresher. I just received a message from a person with 5 plus years of work experience struggling to find jobs right now. That makes me concerned about what must be happening with freshers. As a fresher, you have a tough time answering the job interview questions because you don't have prior experience. In this market, when even workex folks are struggling, it might be better for you to get some work experience in India before heading out for your masters. The exception here can be if you have done a good number of internships and projects already. But if you have no industrial experience whatsoever, then it may not be a good idea to go for masters directly. Fourth thing I've said is it is okay to compromise on the university. Earlier, I have had some very sharp clients going to universities like Drexel because it was cheap to do so. With US being meritocratic, people from even these kind of second and third tier universities were able to get into places like Google. But today's situation is different. First, job market is tough. Second, you may have to come back to India if you don't get H1B for example. So I think the brand of the university that you attend matters more than what it used to in the past. If you study from Drexel and come back to India, nobody is even going to bat an eyelid on the name of Drexel. But if you hail from Georgia Tech or UPenn, at least the perception of those brands is better on your resume. The crux is, I would feel a little more uncomfortable going to a no-name university in 2024 because I don't know what the future entails. The only exception to this would be what I am going to say in the next point. So let's talk about the next point which is, it is okay to fund entirely via education loans. This is what I've said in the past. Now, most of my clients and I myself took education loan 
for my masters in US and I've always felt that taking a loan for your education abroad is fine because the ROI if you're going to a top 100 university is good enough. You eventually find high paying job and you're able to do well despite paying off the loan. Now I know that it is still impossible to study in US without an education loan because most universities are still expensive but I would be really more cautious about these loans now. I would not want to take a huge loan in this job market because if I cannot find a job or get the work visa like H1B, I might have to move back to India on an Indian salary and it would suck to pay off that loan in Indian salary. So my advice would be be stingy with your money. Minimize your loan, which means avoid uber expensive schools such as Columbia, NYU, where the chances of getting financial aid is very low. And this is the exception I talked about in the last point. The scenario where it might be okay to go to a lower ranked school is if it is coming out much cheaper than a higher ranked one. So for example, Stony Brook can be a good alternative instead of going to NYU or San Jose State University might be okay instead of going to UC Riverside if you don't have rich parents. Save money where you can. So those are the five things I was wrong about in the past. These things will not work in current 2024 market. But some of my old advice still rings true. It is evergreen and that includes number one, do only STEM courses so that you can get three year OPT. Second, go for courses which are at least 1.5 years long so that you can do an internship. And lastly, look at study abroad not as an expense but an investment. And that's it from my side. Who knew the world would be changing so fast, isn't it? Let me know what you think and I will see you soon with another video next week. Take care. Bye-bye.